It is officially fall and I could not be happier. The weather is getting nice and cool, we're getting closer to Christmas, and of course, it's the time of year for pumpkins. Now I planted with my family's help a little pumpkin patch of miniature pumpkins, and it was a total disaster. This is the singular pumpkin that actually grew the way it was supposed to and got all the way big without getting destroyed by the squash bugs and vine borers. This is my singular pumpkin. It's a very beautiful pumpkin, but I was hoping for a whole bunch. So if I want pumpkins, at this point, I'm gonna have to settle for some DIY pumpkins. And that's what I'm bringing you today. I'm going to share five DIY pumpkins that you can make. So let's jump into it. For our first DIY pumpkin, I'm using this foam pumpkin from Dollar Tree and some yarn. You can get yarn from Dollar Tree, but I'm using these three colors that I already had. Now, I was originally planning to do this project a little differently. My initial plan was to punch a large hole through the top and bottom of the pumpkin, which isn't too bad to do because it's just foam and these pumpkins are hollow. And then I was going to wrap the yarn around the outside and down inside the pumpkin, spiraling it around and around until it was covered in yarn. But then I decided I didn't really want to do it that way, and instead I just wrapped the yarn completely around the outside of the pumpkin. I did feed the yarn through the hole I'd already made to tie it off, and I tucked the tail into the center of the pumpkin to start it, but if you don't want to punch a hole through it, then you can just tie a knot on the bottom and cover the tail with the wrapping of the yarn. So anyways, the wrapping is pretty straightforward. I wrapped all the way around one time and then went around again to fill in any of the orange gaps. You can also spread the threads of yarn to fill in any gaps. Once the pumpkin is covered the way you like, tie off the yarn on the bottom and tuck the tails under the wrapped yarn. At this point we just need a stem, so I tested how the foam stem looked, but I was not a fan. So then I tried a piece of cork. I carefully shoved a toothpick inside the cork, and then I pushed the other end of the toothpick into the pumpkin. I felt like that was too tall, so I trimmed the cork, re-added the toothpick, and added it to the pumpkin to complete the look. And here is how this pumpkin turned out. I love the texture on this pumpkin, and I also love how simple it was to create. This is a great option if you want to match it to a specific color scheme. Just use whatever color yarn you want. This next pumpkin also uses a Dollar Tree foam pumpkin, as well as some Dollar Tree napkins and Elmer's glue. My Dollar Tree was out of the traditional white glue, but this purple stuff worked just fine. The basic idea here is we are going to mix the glue with a little water and then Mod Podge the napkins onto the pumpkins, but I stubbornly tried a kind of stupid method first. So I knew I wanted to cover the orange of the pumpkin, but I didn't really feel like painting, so I thought, hey, since I'm already Mod Podging, I might as well just Mod Podge a layer of white napkins on first. Yeah, don't do this. It takes way too long to get the necessary level of coverage, but as an aside, this does make a cute mummy pumpkin. So anyways, I finally came to my senses and ripped all the white napkins off, and then I just used an acrylic paint to paint my pumpkin. I opted for white because that matched with my napkins, but of course you can make the background be whatever color you want. This took a few coats because I used a gloss paint, but a matte finish will give better coverage and a chalk paint will give the best coverage. While the paint dried, I prepped my napkin pieces. These napkins typically have two layers, so I peeled the layers apart and used just the section with the print. As a side note, these particular napkins were super difficult to separate. Normally the Dollar Tree napkins separate very easily, so I don't know if that makes them better quality or worse quality than normal. Anyways, once the layers were separated, I cut out the sections of print that I wanted to use. Then I mixed up roughly equal parts of water and glue to create my Mod Podge. And don't sweat it if the ratio isn't exact, the glue and water mixture is pretty forgiving, just aim for roughly equal amounts. And now for the fun part, Mod Podging the napkin pieces to the pumpkin. I like to use a foam brush for this step because I can easily spread the mixture while also smoothing out the napkin piece and my hands don't get very sticky. Position your pieces however you want. You can cover just a section of the pumpkin, you can cover it and leave gaps between the napkin pieces, or you can overlap like I'm doing. Because my napkins are light in color, you can see the layers of the overlap and I think it's such a fun look. I added my largest pieces first and then filled in with the individual sunflowers. I thought about adding some of the leaf sections, but I decided I liked the pumpkin just the way it was with the sunflowers. I set the pumpkin in the sun to dry and debated what kind of stem I wanted to use. I eventually opted to paint the foam stem that came with it. I first painted it brown, but I wasn't really feeling it, so then I tried a blue. I really like this color, but I can't decide if I like it with this pumpkin, so I may change it again later on. But for now, that's the stem, and I just stuck it right back into the foam. I think this one turned out so cute. I love these sunflower print napkins and it gives such a cool finished look. For this third pumpkin, I've gotta be honest and say it didn't turn out quite as good as I'd hoped. 
I've seen this DIY where you wrap rope into loops to create a pumpkin, so I decided to try it with this deco mesh rope stuff from the Dollar Tree. This has some stretch to it, and I think that contributed to why mine didn't turn out so perfect. So anyways, the basic idea is to wrap the rope or mesh tube around a cylinder. I'm using my Contigo water bottle for my first attempt, and I also have a long piece of yarn that I've taped to the water bottle that the mesh tube will get wrapped around as well. Once I've wrapped all of the mesh, I'm going to take my yarn piece, pull it as tight as I can, and tie a knot. So in hindsight, I should have stopped with just the yarn tied on there, but I decided to attach it more firmly in the center by using the twist tie that came with the mesh tubing. This ended up making it look even messier, and the pumpkin didn't hold the nice round shape as well. At this point, I decided to make a second attempt at the pumpkin using a narrower cylinder. The narrower the cylinder, the better I found the mesh held its shape. But the process is the exact same as with the water bottle. Wrap it around the tube and then tie it tightly. As you can see, when I take it off the smaller cylinder, the pumpkin held its shape so much more neatly. But then yes, I was stupid and added the twist tie again, and that made it look sloppy. So if you use a narrow cylinder and just tie it with the yarn, you can make this project look pretty awesome. But since I wasn't getting the results I wanted, I decided it wouldn't hurt if I tried one more method. Basically, I wrapped the mesh tubing about six times, cut it, and tied it off. And I repeated this with all the mesh. Then I took all these little sections and tied them together in hopes that it would end up neater, but honestly it looked about the same. So in the end, this is how my pumpkin turned out. I just added a stem from one of the foam pumpkins. To get this project to turn out right, be sure to just tie with the yarn while it's on the tube and then neatly remove it to get that perfect pumpkin shape. For our next pumpkin idea, I have another video showing this full DIY, but I'll give a brief overview here. Basically, I'm going to use a roll of toilet paper as the pumpkin frame, and I will wrap it in tissue paper. You can cut your tissue paper into smaller rectangles and tuck those into the top of the toilet paper roll, or you can use a full sheet of tissue paper and just tuck the corners into the center. For a stem, I just used a clothespin. If you want to give it more texture, you can wrap the clothespin in twine. I also took some pieces of twine and glued leaves from the Dollar Tree to the end, and then tucked these pieces in next to the clothespin to complete the look. These turned out so cute, and I love that they're so easy to store. At the end of the season, just pack away the tissue paper, clothespin, and fake leaves, and use the roll of toilet paper. Doesn't get much easier than that. For our last DIY pumpkin, I'm going to show how I assemble these canning lid rings into an adorable piece of decor. Now, I have heard they're a little hard to find this year because of supply chain issues, but I have these rings from years ago that I assemble every season. All you need is the rings and some string, and I'm using leather rope. But basically, string the lids onto your rope. I use 15 lids. Then adjust them so they all nestle one inside the other and tie tightly. Once they are tied together, adjust those last two so that way they nest the same way all the other lids do, and from there you're good to go. For a stem, I added a stick of cinnamon, and I also have some leaves I cut out of fabric. This is my absolute favorite DIY pumpkin, and I love assembling it every fall season. Again, this one is easy to store because it can be disassembled at the end of the season. So these are my five DIY pumpkin ideas. I hope these inspire you all to do some fall crafting this season. I have some crochet pumpkins that I'm also going to be adding to my collection soon, so be sure to come back for those tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, happy fall, and happy crafting.